Snowflake is fast, but it's not free. In today's demonstration, we are going to take a look at the basics of cost management to help you get a better feel of some of the billing, budgeting, query history, and how to manage compute and storage costs in Snowflake. What we're going to do is make sure we are logged in to Snowflake. If you haven't checked out this video right here where I show you how to create your very own free trial, make sure you do that first. And if you haven't already liked that video, make sure you do because it's a great way to get full access to Snowflake. Now with Snowflake open, I wanna dive into how to look at cost management, view your query history and more. First, let's go to the left-hand side of Snowflake and we're gonna make our way downtown to monitoring. Monitoring is a great tab because we're gonna have the ability to assess all of the individual queries or perhaps grouped queries if needed to see what might be eating up a lot of compute costs. You can see some of the things that I've run recently. One was from an earlier edition where we loaded and queried some customer data. I used a medium-sized warehouse and taking a peek at it, I had a fast query and I can see I didn't really do too much that was crazy here. And I can see right below it, I ran the same query with the compute warehouse. What's kind of crazy about this is everything is gonna be done here. And you'll see I have my username, but maybe if there were others, I could assess their queries. I also could take some time to look at a time period, maybe a specific user, and even a status. Maybe I have a lot of blocked queries, or I have something that failed, or maybe all my successes, right? You have a great ability here. Now, this is one piece of the puzzle. If you have queries that are taking a very long duration, you might be able to go here and assess. Mine was pretty short. And you can tell here, as I hover, it's gonna let me see what I queried. I just did select from the Snowflake sample data, where, where, where clause was automobile, and then I ordered it by the customer key. And you know what? I can go ahead and copy this or immediately view the results right there. That is a great ability to really see what's going on between your queries and others. I really like that view for that reason. But now it's time to think a little bit more specific about our costs. For that area, I like to drop down to the admin area. When I click on the admin area, I'm going to be immediately greeted with the first tab, which is cost management. This is the big one. This is where we want to go. Now, if you weren't a part of our earlier series, you saw that I talked about how the Snowflake architecture splits up your compute cost and your storage cost. Couple that with its pay as you go. And this means you're in a really great ability to lower costs and kind of manage some things but this is gonna be a great view for this. Now you can see I've been running some queries here in my free trial and I can see the credit use. I have $4 compute price per credit. How many credits per day? What's my average cost? What's the spend in my free trial currency? All of that is here. It'll also let me know what is the top warehouse. So particularly, I've done a lot in this compute warehouse and that has been the biggest driver of costs. Let's go to view all here on the top warehouses by cost. And if I had any additional, it would showcase here. To the right, I also have cost insights. I haven't done anything too crazy in this account, but if there were some inconsistencies or different things that were really increasing my costs, I would get insight from Snowflake to this. Maybe I have things that are short-lived permanent tables, large tables that I don't really query, all this stuff. So this whole interplay between compute and storage is gonna give you some great intelligent insights. Not only are you gonna see it, but Snowflake's gonna help you out too. Below, you're gonna see another query history view, but it's gonna be grouped by the most expensive queries. So what was a lot? Some of this could be more metadata related, 
to the system. Some of this is your role. Some of this is the warehouse or what you're doing, right? You could see all of that right here. And I can see here, I had one of these right here. And this was a pretty big one. That was a backend system type thing. Below here, though, I see under two warehouses, I created a customer clean table using some sample data. And I can see that this was done in two different warehouses. And it was probably one of my more expensive queries. The great thing about this is, again, I can hover and see why was this so much? Did I do it a lot? What was going on with it? Below here, you'll also see any databases that you have storage in. I brought in some tables. I brought in some JSON files, CSVs, other things. I even connected to Azure Blob data all in our first DB. So I'm using about 4.3 gigabytes so I can assess my databases by storage. This is the first look at the cost management page. Now, if I'm thinking about it at an enterprise level, there is subcategories here. First is the organizational overview. I can go here and get details for my larger enterprise if I have that set up. To the right-hand side of account overview, I have consumption. Consumption is nice because I get a more visualized view of who's using what. Here you can see Compute Warehouse has really gone ham and used a lot of stuff, but the rest really haven't. And hey, makes sense, not too much activity on the weekend. People weren't querying, they weren't working on it. There we go. Well. This is just for my account and my warehouses. And I can see all that's being leveraged here. Maybe a lot is being done in a specific warehouse here. So I would observe and try to make some changes if needed to control costs. Speaking of controlling costs, not only are we worried about compute costs, we also are going to look at our usage type, hit the drop down, and we can view either storage or data transfer. Let's check out our storage real quick. So I'll go to storage here and it's going to take a second to load. It's looking through and I can see how much storage size I'm using. I have a fail safe. So I did some time traveling, some other things, set up those parameters. If you're looking for more information on how to do disaster recovery, set up all of this, check out on our Pragmatic Works On Demand Learning our admin essentials for Snowflake. They're recovering a lot of the disaster recovery policies, budgets, even more of this in greater detail. I'm gonna give you some really good tips and tricks. Other things, cost management. We have the ability to set up a budget as well as a resource monitor. You'll see right here that I actually have a budget set up. I see here on the training warehouse, there is a budget that I have set up and I can see that, hey, they can only use five credits per month. I've set that budget up and I've set up some parameters so I'm gonna get alerted and notified if they exceed it. Luckily, they haven't. They've only used a little bit, but I can track their usage over time. Also, if I don't want to set up directly a budget, which is easy to set up here, I can go to Resource Monitor, and this is going to be my ability to actually monitor usage. If I want to go to Resource Monitor here, and let's just say I pressed Add, I can set one up, set up a quota. Am I monitoring an account, a warehouse? And I can even present certain actions when the quota is reached. When they get to 99%, disable and immediately notify that the warehouse has exceeded. We can set all that up to preserve costs. So let's say you have some people that are exploring with Snowflake and they're not quite there yet. They haven't taken some of my classes. That's okay because we've got some fail safes with these resource monitors and these budgets. This is not only going to help you and your organization determine costs, but track who might be querying things that are using a little bit too much, storing things in a way that really doesn't need to be or duplicating. There's so much to that. At the very least, we've set ourselves up to manage our resources more effectively as a administrator in Snowflake. All in all, Snowflake is very fast. It's very awesome. But once we exceed that free trial, it's not free. That's been a great one. I want to see you on our on-demand learning. Make sure to use Greg40 at checkout and join me in one of our amazing Snowflake classes. That's it for now. Remember, stay frosty.